Now Sarah, Abram's wife. Now wait a minute, now check this out. I told you up to this point, Abraham ain't got no children. But yet we keep reading over and over and over again where it says, I'm going to give this land to your children, your seed, your offspring. Okay, so let's break it down, find out what happened here. Go ahead. Now Sarah, Abram's wife. Sarah, Abram's wife. Sarah no children. She couldn't have no kids, y'all. Go ahead. And she had a handmaid. And she had a maid. An Egyptian. A black woman. Oh, an Egyptian. Whose name was Hagar. Whose name was Hagar. That's why you hear folks say, we ain't Hagar's children. <laughs> That's how they refer to black folk as Aunt Hagar's children. Okay, go ahead. And Sarah said unto Abraham. Sarah said to Abraham. Behold now, the Lord has restrained me. Baby, I can't handle no baby. I can't handle no babies. I can't handle kids, and I know you want one. Okay? So what I want you to do, let me say some stuff. So what I want you to do, and so you know what she's reading. She's reading verse chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. Write it down of Genesis. I can't have no children. So what I want you to do, Abraham, is I'm going to give you my handmaid, Hagar. And what does the fourth verse say? Go ahead. And he went in unto Hagar. And he went in unto Hagar. Now don't get now there's some deep stuff right? Sarah shouldn't have gave the woman to her husband. But she did. And what's really deep is she took it upon herself to say maybe I can have children through her. See that white mentality? See? Maybe I can have children through her. No, no, no. They're going to be her children. They ain't going to be your children. Okay? Ain't you some deep, this some deep stuff. You gonna use this other woman to, so for you to have children. Oh, how you think she gonna feel about that? Okay, so it says, and Abraham went in unto Hagar, and what happened? And she conceived. She got pregnant. Now he was about 70 something years old at this point. Brother was working on, wasn't he? Yeah, buddy. You know? <laughs> You know, we, all, we all often deal with that as therapists, too, because, you know, one of the reasons, brothers, let me drop this on you, okay, this is one of the reasons why uh, sometimes you feel in the pr a pressure to make that matrimonial step, okay? See, men don't have a biological clock. Right. Women got a biological clock, so when their biological clock is running out and they ain't had no children, they want to, come on, let's, come on, come on, come on, I ain't got much time here. Brothers saying, I got all the time in the world, okay? <laughs> Ain't, ain't, ain't no rush. You know, as long as I take care of myself, me and Junior, we got all the time in the world. <laughs> what you rushing for? <laughs> okay? So Abraham in his six, I mean in his seventies at this point, okay? And, and 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 so what happens here? And when she saw that she had conceived. When when Hagar saw that she was pregnant, what happened? Her mistress was despised in her eyes. Yes, okay. All right, now go, go to verse 15 now. And Hagar bare Abram a son. Now check, everybody say, Hagar gave the man a boy. Hagar gave the man a boy. His name was Ishmael. Ishmael. According to the story. According to the story. Now remember she read in Galatians? Abraham had, his written, Abraham had two wives. Okay, Hagar and Sarah. Right? One out of, uh, out, out of, out of uh, sin, or the lust of the flesh, which was Hagar, another out of promise, Sarah's wife, okay? And they had two sons, okay? Ishmael and Isaac. But again, it was allegory, it never happened. Now we're reading it as though it did happen. And this is what people get hung up on. Because people don't know about Galatians 4. They don't know that the Bible says it's an allegory. So they believe it as history. Y'all following what I'm saying? And because they believe it as history, what the people in the in crowd wrote, we govern the world based on this lie. Go ahead, sister. And Abraham called his son's name, which Hagar bear, Ishmael. Ishmael. And Abraham. Now, mind you, y'all, he was 76 years old. Okay, go ahead. Says that Abram was fourscore and six years old. I'm sorry, 86 years old. 86, that's right, 86. 86, brother, brother was kicking. <laughs> now what's really deep is, you know, that don't usually happen, but in their story they wrote it like that. Go ahead. 
when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abraham. Okay, so he was 86 years old when Ishmael was born. Okay, go to the 17th chapter now, verse 1 through 6. And when Abraham was 90 years old and 9. He was 99. Now, now check out, see the time lapse here? He was, he was 86 in the previous chapter. Now we got a big gap here. A big gap of 14 years now. Okay, he's 99 now, almost about to be 100 years old. Okay, and what happened? The Lord appeared to Abraham and said, God came to him again and said what? I am the almighty God. I'm, hey, listen, no, I'm, I'm almighty God. I can do anything, man. <laughs> Go ahead. Walk before me yeah. and be thou perfect. Uh-huh. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Oh, shucks. Go ahead. Now this is deep. At this point, at 99 years old, which means that Ishmael is now 13 and a half, 14 years old. Y'all got me? And God is getting ready to tell him again that I'm going to give all of this to your offspring. So who, who do you think in Abraham's mind God is talking about? Ishmael, he had no other children. Go ahead. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abram. I'm going to change your name from, from Abram to Abraham. The Muslims call him Ibrahim. Go ahead. For a father of many nations have I made. Thee. Go ahead. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Kings are going to come out of you, but he's thinking Ishmael. Ain't nobody else to think of. Go ahead. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant. Y'all got this? I'm going to establish my covenant between you, me, you, and your seed after you, and all of their generations for an everlasting covenant. So based on what the in crowd wrote in this book called the Bible, the Arabs think that it's all theirs. Why am I saying Arabs? Because every Arab on this planet will tell you that they're a descendant of Ishmael. Did y'all get that? Ishmael. That's, that's some, see, y'all see why they wrote this literature now? Okay, the people in power made up this story so they could put it out here to the masses while, and, and watch the masses fight each other while the people who made it up sit back and look at them kill each other off. That's right. Go ahead. To be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. Okay. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan. All the, I'm going to give you that land. Okay? He's saying it again. This whole, and I see what's deep is now it's called the Middle East. It's called Arabia. It's called Palestine. All in that area now. You see what I'm saying? And based on what the Bible says, based on what the Quran says, based on what the Talmud says, this land goes to Abraham's seed. Which at this point is Ishmael. Look at verse uh, 15. What verse are you at? That was 8. Go to 15. Let's save some time. And God said unto Abraham, Yes. As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall mm. her name be. Change her name too. Go ahead. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. Now, it's deep because notice how the in crowd wrote this. I'm going to give you a son also. The word also is there, isn't it? That's it? I will give you a son also from Sarah. Now, I thought she couldn't have no kids. Okay, now mind you, 14 years ago, she couldn't have no kids. So she had to give her, her handmaid, the Egyptian woman, black Egyptian woman who had sex with a Hebrew 
named Abram and gave birth to an Arab <laughs> named Ishmael. Now y'all figure that one out. Ain't that something? Okay, but now here we are 14 years later and God said, I'm going to give you a son also from Sarah. And what did, what did Abraham do? Go ahead. Yes, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Mm. Kings of people shall be of her. Mm -hmm. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed. I know he did. <laughs> Here's a man 99 years old. Now mind you, he didn't laugh 14 years earlier. Because everything was still working. You see what I'm saying? I mean, that, that was realistic to him at that point. But now, hey, hey, God, in case you haven't noticed, okay, uh, uh, <laughs> you know what? You're going to send, you're going to throw down some insight? You know, uh, you're going to, uh, what's that stuff, they, what's that stuff, that chemical? Viagra, God. <laughs> okay. Because God, if you don't send me some Viagra, ain't nothing happening. <laughs> I'm 99 now, God, in case you don't know that, all right? Okay. Go ahead. What happened? And he said in his heart, shall a child be born to him that is 100 years old? Wow. Now check this out. So evidently, it's clear from the literature that the in crowd wrote that Abraham honestly thought that the promise of the land was going to go to Ishmael. Because he's laughing at God now. God's saying, I'm going to make you another son. And Abraham, man, shoot. Uh-uh. Go ahead. And shall Sarah, that is 99. How Sarah? God, in case you didn't realize it. She 99 years old. She almost 100 years too. Okay. Go ahead. This is some deep stuff, ain't it? And what's deep about it, and see, I don't know if anybody ever broke this down to y'all like that, but we grew up believing this mess. We believed it. We didn't break it down. We didn't analyze it. We didn't challenge it. You know why? Because we were taught there's nothing too hard for God. <laughs> That's what we were taught. Go ahead. I mean, really, come on now, keep it real, okay? What would you do if your 99-year-old grandmama came up pregnant? I mean, come on now. <laughs> you, you, that just, no, that ain't going, that ain't, go ahead, read. And Abraham said unto God. Abraham said to God. Oh, that Ishmael might live before me. What did it say? Oh, that Ishmael might live. You get this? It's clear by their own literature that in the mind of Abraham, Ishmael is the son of promise. Wow. Okay. Now, go ahead. What did it say? And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. Mm. And thou shalt call his name Isaac. Okay. Now, the story goes on. Sarah got pregnant. And she gave birth to a son called Isaac, who's 14 years younger than Ishmael. Now, check this out. Look at the 22nd verse. Verses, I'm sorry, 22nd chapter, I'm sorry. What, what, what chapter was that? Verse, you were in 17? Okay, go to verse, chapter 21, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Save some time. Because chapter 21, I think, talks about Sarah. And she got pregnant, and then she put Hagar out. Y'all, So y'all read that one on your own. That, that's, that's, that's a soap opera chapter all by itself. Okay? I mean, if you, if you watch the soaps, I guarantee you're going to love chapter 21. Okay? Because in chapter 21, Sarah gets pregnant, and she finds, hey, 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 Hagar, you can go. Get out! You thought you had it going on because you had his son. I got one now! Get out! Out! I am not going to have your son!
son being an heir along with my son. You's got to go. That's what the 21st chapter is all about. I guarantee if you love the soaps, you're going to love that chapter. Go to verse chapter 22. What does it say? Now check this out. We've read so far that Abraham got two sons. What's the first one's name? Ishmael, who's 14 years older than the second one, which is who? Isaac. Deep. Now read chapter 22, verse 1 and 2. What does it say? And it came to pass after these things. After these things. God did tempt Abraham. God put Abraham to the test. And said unto Abraham. And God said to Abraham. Now y'all check this out. This is going to knock your head. I'm like, this is going to knock your socks off. It's going to blow your hair back. What did God say to Abraham? Behold, here I am. Yes. Take now thy son. Abraham, I want you to take now thy son. Thine only son. What? <laughs> thine only son, Isaac. <laughs> Racism in the guise of religion. God, I want you to take like Abraham. Listen, this is God talking now. I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac, and offer him up as an offering to me. Now, did a new, another in crowd come in and write this or what? Didn't God know that Abram had two sons? So why would God say, take your only son, Isaac? When there's a, one who's 14 years older. Now let's, let, let me, let's, let's drop it even deeper than that. Go to Deuteronomy 21 now. I don't know where I am on the clock. But you're, you're, this reads a little different than mine. So I don't know where I am. I hope I'm, I'm still rolling here. Chapter 21 verses 15 through 17. Now check this out. The same Bible. What does it say? If a man has two wives, if a man has two wives, everybody say Sarah and Hagar. Sarah and Hagar. Go ahead. One is loved and another hated. One is loved and the other is hated. Everybody say Sarah and Hagar. Sarah and Hagar. Go ahead. And they have borne him children. And both of them have borne him children. Go ahead. Both the loved and the hated. Both the Sarah and Hagar. Go ahead. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated. Wait a minute. If the firstborn son be of the one that's hated, meaning Hagar, go ahead, what does it say? It shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. Oh. Did y'all get that? Deuteronomy 21, 15 through 17 clearly says, in this situation, Ishmael is not to be omitted from his inheritance. In fact, if you read a little further, I think it says the firstborn son is supposed to get a double inheritance. But he shall acknowledge by giving him a double portion of all that he has. Yes. Now, when the people of the world are controlled by the book that she just read out of, it only stands to reason that the people who think, hear how I'm saying it, the people who think that they are a descendant of Ishmael says that this land belongs to us because God said so. And the people who think that they are descendants of Isaac says that this land belongs to us because God said so. What is the result? War. What is the result? Genocide. What is the result? Destruction of human life. All in the name of a lie. All in the name of racism. 
in the guise of religion. So these people kill themselves off while the in crowd, the liars, the people who made it up in the first place, who told you there was an allegory, sit back, come in, commandeer the land and the resources thereof and benefit from it. Where the sincere, pure-hearted people who genuinely believe that they are right become the out crowd. Family, it's time for us to set ourselves free from this mess. I'll shake. Did that make sense? I hope, I mean, I hope, I hope it was clear to you. See? Now you need all those, all those references. Learn them. Learn them. Write them down. If you didn't get it, get the tape. All right? The CD will be available this, this Wednesday. Get the CD and learn that so that you can show it to your people yes, who will die for that. They stand, they live by it. I think my next message is going to be God, the most confused person in the universe. <laughs> You know why I say that? Because religion. God tells one person it's a sin to drink. The same God tells somebody else, drink a little wine. I'll save that message for another time. You know, we get all these conflicting messages from God. Ran out of time on the tape. They put it on here though, because it's so important. In case y'all didn't know this, while Saddam Hussein was calling on God to help the Iraqis, George Bush was also calling on God to help the Americans. Give me that tape back, Sheryl. I'm going to see how much time I got on. I want this to get on the tape, what I'm about to say. Is there some tape left on there? Yeah. Oh, cool. Get, get, throw it back up here right quick. I want this on the tape. We need to come to grips with the reality, brothers and sisters, that the religious perceptions in any class within a divided society really have nothing at all to do with God. That's right. That's right. Nothing. In fact, I would be safe in saying that God is not the one who caused the deaths in the wars that have been fought. Mm -mm. The misguided beliefs of people and greed of the ruling class. It would be safe to say that and I hope y'all don't take this wrong Come on. I believe it would be safe to say that we made God. All right. Come on. Now don't misquote what I'm saying. I'm not saying God does not exist. Right. What I am saying is God didn't speak to nobody. 
to tell them what to say to us. Y'all grabbing this? Now I'm not saying God does not speak. What I am saying is God is real and in you. Got me? So once you come to the realization that God is in you, then you don't need to wait to hear a word from the Lord from somebody else. Because that whole thing is designed to control you. All my life I grew up hearing people say, the Lord told me to tell you. Even as a boy, when I would hear that line, I knew something wasn't right about it. That's right, Mom. You know, because whenever a person has to preface what they're about to say with the line, the Lord told me to tell you what that means is I want you to accept what I'm getting ready to say. See, if God really gives me something in my spirit to share with somebody, I don't need to say the Lord told me to say it. Just go on and say it. That's it. And if it really comes from God, the power in what I say will have its effect in the person I say it to. Is this making sense, y'all? We need to understand that religion has targeted traditional African spirituality. It calls it superstitious, it calls it idol worship. The reason for that is because African spirituality is not trying to control anybody. It's simply trying to make you better, period. If you listen to the African Holy Ghost that you were born with, not the one you tarried for, the one you were born with. If you just learn to listen to the Spirit of God that's already in you, which literally comes from the electromagnetism of a chemical in you called melanin. If you just learn to listen to it, you'll be all right. It's the melanin in you that's your first mind. Religion denies an African even to a right to their name. God is calling ourselves Smith and John son and Tom's son and Jack's son <laughs> Anders' son Feather's son James, William, Andrew, George, Robert, all of them, Raymond. These are not African spiritual names. So the system, brothers and sisters, employs religion as a tool of racism to ensure the mental castration of the ignorant but loyal subjects that it controls. Look at the person next to you and say, free your African self. Ashe.